everyone, Steve Fernandez here with this week's Market Insights video. Today's topic is solar. You may not have heard much about solar recently, and it makes sense. It's been kind of overshadowed by the, uh, you know, the energy crisis that we're seeing play out in parts of the, the Russia conflict, or you can call it whatever you want. Uh, but there's actually some developments going behind the scenes right now with solar, and I'd say it's quietly gaining traction. Uh, now, before we get started, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. We're gonna provide you great content every Friday. And if you're not new, you know, if you like the video, hit the like button or you're not subscribed, obviously subscribe. Um, and leave a comment and let us know if you're using solar, if you know anybody that's using solar, uh, and if you're saving money or, you know, if, you, if you're happy with your decision. I mentioned there's some developments going on behind the scenes. Most recently, just this week, I saw an update on the Repower EU plan outlined by the European Commission. So a little bit of background on that. Uh, basically, the European Commission is looking to transition a lot of their energy consumption to renewable energy, and they've seen a catalyst or they're taking a catalyst here to, to make that process occur much faster. And that's the Russia situation that I mentioned. Uh, they mentioned that Russia, Russia's uh, use of energy as a political and economic weapon weapon is costing their taxpayers 100 billion per year. So they want to move away from Russian energy as quickly as possible. And it, two big proposals as part of that repower EU plan. The first being they want to potentially make a legal obligation to have solar panels on every single new building, not just residential, every single new building. And with that, they want to see their solar capacity and they want to plan on doubling their solar capacity by 2025. So think we're almost halfway through 2022, two and a half years or so, they want to double capacity. Um, that would be huge. That'd be huge for solar uh, stocks, solar energy investment. And, you know, I think that would actually set a precedent for the rest of the world potentially. And that idea that all new solar, all new buildings will have solar is not unheard of. We're, we're already seeing that in the US. California, as of 2020, requires all new residential, at least single family and multifamily residences to have rooftop solar. So the precedent has already been set. Wouldn't be surprised to see that go through in the European Union, considering they're already pretty pro-renewable energy and, and they've been pretty fast to adopt uh, renewable energy technology. Now, solar stocks have been down in the dumps recently, like the rest of tech. Uh, there has been some concern specifically about solar with the midterm elections coming up. Uh, conservatives, Republicans have developed kind of a stigma for being pro fossil fuel uh, and not as uh, inviting to renewable energy. But we've seen here recently, just in the past couple of weeks, that that may not be entirely true. Uh, for example, uh, Florida Governor DeSantis, who's really considered to be a very conservative a governor went ahead and immediately vetoed a bill uh, that would have blocked net metering. So if you're not familiar with net metering, it's basically um, a policy where uh, energy companies will pay residents for the excess power that they generate or the excess energy they generate from their solar that they're not using. Uh, obviously, uh, en energy companies don't like that because they're paying uh, consumers for energy, but at the same time, it's also a very uh, solar friendly policy, net metering um, that DeSantis wanted to uphold. So good to see that. And I think it kind of reflects my view that conservatives have to be accepting to renewable energy to, to secure some bid, uh, some votes uh, in the midterms and in, in, in the future. What I look at solar, I see a technology that has really become cost competitive in recent years. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I believe it's about 80% decline in solar costs, so solar PV costs uh, over the past decade, pretty dramatic. And now analysts are expecting solar could become cheaper than natural gas in nearly every country by next year. Uh, pretty remarkable. And if you zoom out, that's already kind of true. Uh, two thirds of the world at least in two thirds of the world, renewable energy, which isn't limited to solar, is already cheaper than uh, building out new natural gas. So when uh, consumers or when companies look to invest in energy, uh, you know, solar has to be on the radar. The, the pendulum is beginning to uh, swing towards solar in terms of uh, a cost advantage. So keeping an eye on that, 
I believe new data will probably be released here in the next couple of months uh, that shows, you know, renewable energy might be cheaper than uh, traditional or solar may be cheaper than traditional energy now. Um, so I'll be keeping an eye on that. I'm pretty excited about solar adoption. Uh, I was just in Thailand, which is a third world country for a couple of weeks, and it struck me, you know, how much of their money is going towards energy. Obviously, it's not a very wealthy country. Um, and this is true for a lot of third world countries, especially those that aren't really rich in resources. Um, so with energy security provided by cheaper solar, you know, they have a chance to reduce the amount that they're spending on energy, um, which really help them spearhead their economic development. I saw something like 25%, upwards of 25% of some of their incomes are going of, of income is going to energy in third world countries. That is ridiculous. Uh, I think in the US, it's something like two and a half percent. So keep that in mind. You know, there's that, you know, ethical and uh, ethical reason that, you know, cheaper solar energy uh, or solar adoption uh, should really play out here. Now, if you want to get exposure to solar stocks, uh, check out the Invesco Solar ETF, ticker TAN. It's actually outperforming the NASDAQ this year. Take that with a grain of salt because it's still down on the year, uh, but it's only down 14% compared to the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100 ETF, um, down 28%. So it's only you know at a half of a loss of the NASDAQ 100 ETF. Um, to me, that speaks volumes about solar and how in the market and investors view solar as an investment, um, myself included. Uh, so if you, th if you think it's a good time to buy solar stocks, which I do, you're getting a pretty good price on them. Uh, feel free to check out the TAN ETF. It's going to do it for today's video. Again, leave a comment if you are using solar, you know, if you liked what I had to say, or you, maybe you disagree with what I had to say. I welcome the comments and feedback. Until next week, stay safe.